In this short video, we're going to look at three vintage video formats and their quality. First, we're going to look at a digital 8 picture. Then we're going to look at a 3CCD high 8 camera, consumer camera, a CCD VX3. Follow that up with a DCR VX1000 mini DV3 chip. Compare the picture quality. Let's check it out. So we're going to start out with the worst one first. This is the first generation of Digital 8 camcorder that Sony released, the, the DCR uh, TRV-110. Now what made this so bad was the CCD front end. It had an absolutely terrible, very low resolution front end. Take a look at the... Look at the look at the pistol of the flower. You can see the pixels. You can count them. Look at the pixels. If as it, as the flower moves a bit, you can actually see the mosaic filter on it. It was just horrendous. And the reason that Sony did this was because they did not want to undermine their sales of their higher end mini DV camcorders, regardless whether it was a single chip or a three chip. The mini DV camcorders typically had an image sensor with about 680,000 pixels. The Digital 8 had a sensor with a little under 250,000 pixels and they all those weren't active because they used they used some of them for the steady shot. So they actually had a very low pixel count. As you can see on that zoom, if you look around the leaves of the flowers, you can see the pixels. They look like big square blocks. It's horrible. The Digital 8 format itself can record 500 lines of resolution. Everything you see on this recording was mastered on Digital 8. This was mastered on Digital 8. The high 8 footage that, that, that follows was dumped to Digital 8 to edit and output onto a digital 8 tape. This next series of shots was recorded using a Sony EVW300. This was a professional broadcast quality high 8 camcorder. It uh, originally sold for around $12,000. I actually bought this from a TV station that had leased it. I guess I got I bought it from Sony. It was returned from a TV station they had leased it for a couple of years. It was over at Check Six TV. They used it for news, and uh, after their lease was up, they returned it to Sony, and I was able to pick it up from Sony. And I still it still cost me a lot of money. It was like still sixty six hundred dollars, which was a lot of money for a camera, but at least it was not twelve thousand. Anyway, this series of shots. This was shot on an EVW three hundred three chip professional high eight camera. The next shot you're going to see coming up right now, this was shot with a Sony CCD VX3, which was the three chip consumer camera, which is was very close in quality to that EVW300. Not quite as sharp and the lens wasn't quite as good as the big Canon lens I had on it, but it was, it was still very good quality, better than that digital eight by far. Next shot will be Mini DV. This last series of shots were made using a Sony DCR VX1000, which was the 3 CCD Mini DV. As you can see, the quality of this camera is fantastic. And this is why, when the Digital 8 format, because Digital 8 recorded the same bitstream as mini DV. So Digital 8 could have produced this type of picture, but because the market for Digital 8 was a low end market, they did not want to jeopardize the sale of their higher end camcorders. This is this one was the the highest of the high as far as Sony went as in their consumer or prosumer cameras. If you took a step up, you made a, a, a much bigger jump in price, but the VX1000 was considered the gold standard for prosumer equipment. It was incredible 
how good that camera was, but it was expensive. This was like a $3,500 camera versus the Digital 8, which was less than $1,000. Digital 8 could have, with the right front end, delivered a picture that was identical to this because the format recorded on the tape is identical. Bit for bit, Digital 8 and Mini DV and DV Cam, which was Sony's next up. That was their, their broadcast version. They all recorded 25 megabit um, bitstream, 5 to 1 compression, fixed compression, but they were all the same. Mini DV, Digital 8, and DV Cam were the same. The difference between DV Cam and consumer Mini DV was the width of the track. It, the tape speed ran faster and the width of the track was greater. And what that resulted in was less chance of dropout because the video track was wider. But other than that, they recorded exactly the same bitstream, fully compatible. But Mini DV, as I say, was probably the best of the tape format that we saw when we were dealing with standard definition. And then they bumped up to HDV, which was high definition using the same tape. Anyway, I just found this old evaluation tape that I did years ago and I wanted to throw it out so you guys could see the difference in the consumer cameras and why the higher end cameras justified the higher price. <laughs>